Solomon's temple was created around 900 BC, lasted about 400 years, was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, and 70 years later the second temple was rebuilt. Now there were two main reasons for the temple. The first reason was for the altar upon which to sacrifice animals for the atonement of sin. Originally, before Solomon's temple, there was a tabernacle, which was a tent, which housed the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible does not mention when precisely the Ark of the Covenant was taken out of Israel. The second temple was built 70 years after Solomon's temple was destroyed. The reason for this was because Israel was worshiping false gods, breaking the laws, the Ten Commandments. It was really infuriating God. So all the northern tribes of Israel in the northern kingdom were banished. They got invaded. Then within a century or, or two, the other kingdoms were invaded and Solomon's temple was destroyed. Most of the Israelites were taken into captivity. Seventy years later, the temple was rebuilt around 520 BC. The second temple lasted until 70 AD when it was destroyed by the Romans in the Roman Empire Titus. Since then, the Jews have not had a temple. Now, according to the Jews, the Jewish prophecy, they're waiting to rebuild one temple. The temple that was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. Christ prophesied the temple would be destroyed. Like I mentioned earlier, the whole point and reason for the temple was to sacrifice animals for the atonement of sin. Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the covenant, the prophecy and the promise that a Savior would come out of the seed line from Abraham. The Israelite religion of the Old Testament was an incomplete covenant. It hadn't been fulfilled yet. There's a lot of Christians out there that claim that God and the Jews still have a covenant. God and Abraham had a covenant. God promised that his seed would father a great nation. That was Israel. Moses was given the law, commandments, and Christ is that law incarnate. Covenant fulfilled, prophecy fulfilled. So when Jesus came, there's no longer a need to continue in the old practice of the Israelite religion. What happened, most of the Israelites rejected Jesus. The ones that accepted Jesus became known as Christ followers or Christians. This is when Judaism transforms itself. Before Christ came, they were known as Judeans from the tribe of Judah. But after they rejected their Messiah, the whole term Jew takes on a new meaning. And now Christians take on the definition of God's chosen. And the word Jew takes on the meaning of Christ rejecter because of the denial of the law incarnate. So Christ is crucified around 30 3 AD. Not too soon after, the second temple is destroyed by the Romans. Emperor Titus burns it to the ground. So now the Jews no longer have a religion. First of all, there's no temple. There's no altar. Can't perform any sacrifices. The priesthood just ceased to exist because they don't have anything to do. In fact, there's no longer a need to have a temple. Christ came. He was the sacrifice. Could you imagine trying to explain to God that you want to atone for your sin by sacrificing an animal because Jesus Christ wasn't good enough? You'd rather use a goat or a sheep or a lamb? Today, the Jews want to rebuild the temple again, a third one. The only problem is there's a Muslim dome that was built right in the place where Solomon's temple was. Think about it for a second. Why is that temple so important to them? Why does it have to be built exactly right at that spot? It's not a very well-known historical event, but in 363 AD, Julian the Apostate, who was a nephew of Constantine, the Roman Emperor who made Christianity a recognized state religion, Julian the Apostate, being baptized and raised Christian, actually hated the religion. He hated Christians. He hated the fact that Rome was no longer pagan. And he wanted to bring it back to its roots. The restoration of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem would, in Julian's opinion, defeat the Christian argument of replacement theology that the church was the true Israel and that the temple's destruction and the subsequent exile 
was the just punishment offered by the Jewish people for the crucifixion. So he put this idea into a plan. He met with the chief head Jews, told them about the idea, which they were very excited about, put together all the money, the workers, the building materials, everything he would need to get the project started. Here's where the story gets interesting. The moment the workers start to dig in the foundation and start laying some bricks, just so happens to be an earthquake that rips through Galilee. The historical accounts indicate that the earth ripped open, fire came shooting out of the ground, killing, swallowing the workers, burning them, shaking the ground like a scene out of an apocalyptic disaster movie or a Steven Spielberg film. And this wasn't just a little earthquake. This was accompanied by winds, by clouds, lightning. So they began to dig a new foundation in which work many thousands were employed. But what they had thrown up in a day was by repeated earthquakes, the night followed cast back again into the trench. Olypius, the next day, earnestly pressed on the work with the assistance of the governor of the province. There issued, says Ammianus, such horrible balls of fire out of the earth near the foundations which rendered the place from time to time inaccessible to the scorched and blasted workmen. And the victorious element continued and in this manner, obstinately and resolutely bent as if it were to drive them to a distance. It was earthquakes, fire eruption, whirlwinds, lightning. This judgment of the Almighty was ushered in by storms and whirlwinds by which prodigious heaps of lime and sand and other loose materials were carried away. After these follow lightning, the usual consequences of collision of clouds and tempests, its effects were first destroying the more solid materials and melting down the iron instruments, secondly impressing shining crosses on the bodies of the garments of assistance without distinction in which there was something that in art and elegance exceeded all painting and or embroidery, which when the in fidels perceived they endeavored but not in vain to wash them out in the third place came the earthquake which casted out the stone stones of the old foundation and shook the earth into the trench or cavity dug for the new besides overthrowing the adjoining buildings and portices were lodged great numbers of jews designed for the work who were all either crushed to death or at least maimed or wounded the number killed or hurt was increased by the fiery eruption in the fourth place attended both with storms and tempests above and with an earthquake below. From this eruption, many fled to a neighboring church for shelter, but could not obtain entrance. Whether on account of it being closed by a secret invisible hand, as the Father state the case, or at least by special providence, through the entrance into the oratory, being choked up by the frightened crowd, all pressing to be foremost going to try to build this temple and there's an earthquake and fire and brimstone lightning and wind everything crumbling down and exploding and you're running away and you see there's a church nearby you run towards the church and you can't get in it's locked it will not open a bunch of the people ran towards the church wouldn't open they got stuck pushing up against each other and then the ground opens up 